Hey, this is Shane Long, wedding and portrait photographer based out of Minnesota in Southwest Florida. And anytime I pick up a new lens, I like to make a video for you guys here on YouTube, just in case it helps any of you who are trying to make the same decision. So what I was running into, I'm doing beach sessions. My favorite lens is the RF 50 millimeter 1.2, but I wanted a lightweight option to throw in my bag uh, that I could use to get some context kind of photos out on the beach. So I've picked up the RF 24mm 1.8 IS STM. It's what I'm using to record myself right now. And in this video, I'm gonna take a look at some of the sharpness, the background blur, just everything about the lens. So hopefully it's helpful for you. Here we go. When my 24mm 1.8 arrived, I paired it with my R5. On my second R5, I put my 50mm 1.2 and right away I took it out on a bunch of beach sessions so I could see how I liked it. Here's a little behind the scenes now so you can see firsthand how the lens performed. All right, so I'm heading to my first shoot now. I've got the uh, 24mm on this side and I have the 50mm on this side. Excited to try this out, here we go. All right, let's try a shot here of the pier, which now features the hurricane damage of Hurricane Ian. We're gonna try it at 1.8 here, focusing kind of there. Now we're gonna stop it down to F. Let's just try F4 here. Wait for a nice wave to come in. All right, we have them here. I'm gonna try a shot. I'm up on the pier here. I'm gonna shoot down and get kind of a high angle because I can't fly my drone here this close. There's an airport nearby. So this will hopefully just give me another perspective on this shot here. I have another engagement session tonight. I'm hoping to try it out uh, downtown Naples here a little bit and use it on some little uh, seashells here that I found on the beach uh, just to see how the macro abilities stack up so here we go all right so we've got them going over here we're gonna do a shot right there see how this turns out here One, pick her up. There it is. Love it and give him a kiss there. Perfect. All right, let's see what we can take here while we are waiting for the couple to arrive. All right, check out this little spot right here. We are gonna see how this looks. Two, bring the head closer to him right there. Three, two, one, and again. Can you give her that subtle dip again you did before? You did so good on it. Perfect. Three, two, one. Give her that kiss again. Good. Hey, you have a lifetime of happiness. And then come away from the tree like four steps out into that gorgeous light. Even right there, if you just like look at each other, that's fantastic. Let's see, scrape a hand onto him maybe right there. Awesome right there. Good work. Jack, I love that, dude. Perfect. I walked away from these first sessions extremely impressed. The lens did exactly what I hoped it would. It was wide enough that it provided me context photos. 
It was light enough that it added very little weight to my bag. It had a bright maximum aperture at 1.8 that allowed me to blur out the background and isolate the subjects. And the autofocus was quick enough it could capture a swinging baby and a running dog. Now we will take a look at the size, sharpness, and background blur of the lens. One of the main reasons I bought this lens was due to its size. It's compact and small, weighing just 9.5 ounces or 270 grams. By comparison, the 15 to 35 weighs 1.85 pounds or 840 grams. In other words, it's over three times as heavy. And this view will show you how much longer it is on the camera. It's almost identical in size to the 35 mm 1.8. It's larger than the 16 mm 2.8 clearly smaller and lighter than the 50mm 1.2 that I use it with most of the time. It's smaller than the 24 to 105 f4 to 7.1. And here are the lenses I'll be comparing it to today, the 24 to 105 and the 15 to 35 2.8. To test out the sharpness of this lens, I set up a tripod with my Canon R5. The photos here that are in blue are taken with the $600 RF 24mm 1.8. The ones in red are taken with the $2400 RF 15-35 2.8. And the ones taken in yellow are taken with the $400 kit lens 24-105 F4-7.1. to Let's go ahead and compare the 24 1.8 to the 2.8 15 to 35. Both shot at their maximum aperture so we can see how they look and their sharpness straight open. Now, if we look at the images as a whole, I think they both look very similar. I could use either of those. If we zoom in, we'll look at the center sharpness here. I think they both hold up fantastic. I don't really see any difference right there. Once we come down here into the corner, we'll see that the 24, millimeter on the 15 to 35 is a lot sharper than on the 1.8. Now here's the 24 1.8 and the 15 to 35 both at 24 millimeters both shot at f4 as a whole they look very similar when we zoom in center almost identical I don't really see much difference there as we come into the corner that's again where we notice the difference the L version holds up really well into the corners. Finally, here are both lenses shot at f8. The differences now are very, very close. Sharp in the middle. The L still has a little bit of a hold in the corners. Now, I know some of you will be coming from the 24 to 105 f4 to 7.1. That's this lens. Over here again, I have the 24 1.8. Both of these images were shot at f4 so that we can get a side by side comparison. When we zoom in, both of them at f4, it's pretty clear that the, the prime lens is doing a better job. This one looks really razor sharp, whereas this one looks a little bit mushy or fuzzy, kind of even in the center of the frame. Finally, I did a comparison with both of them at f8 to see if the 24 to 105 would catch up. And it still doesn't look like it did. It seems soft even in the center. And when we get down to the edge, it's even softer down in the corner compared to the 24 prime. My takeaway from looking at the sharpness of this lens is this lens is plenty sharp in the center and the middle part of the frame, even at f1.8, which is typically what I need as a portrait photographer. I don't need lots of detail in the extreme corners of the frame because I'm trying to put my attention on my subjects. That said, I do like that I can stop it down and it does become sharper in the corner if I need to do a, a tack sharp landscape or something like that. As a portrait photographer, the big reason I bought this lens is to isolate my subjects from the background and put the focus on them. So I took these test photos of myself to see how 1.8 compares to 2.8 and compares to f4, which is the respective apertures these three lenses shoot at. So this is the 24 at 1.8. This is the L version at 2.8, and this is the kit lens the, at f4, the, the 4 to 7 lens. Let's zoom in now and see how they look. So here on this side, we have the, the 1.8 compared to the 2.8, and you can kind of see how much more background blur you'll get in a 1.8 version. And now we'll compare it, we'll switch this one over to the f4, and you can see the difference between 1.8 and f4 in terms of background blur.
In order to see the foreground and background blur of this lens, I brought it over to the fountain here and took a couple photos, putting my focus point right near where the water was falling off. I know that when I'm looking for a lens, I like to see the shape of the out of focus uh, highlights here. So this allows you to see how it looks in the foreground and looking at the fountain here, the background water splashes. Now you can kind of see how it shapes up in the background of the photo. So we'll try it here at two apertures again. And we'll stop it down one-handed without trying to drop the camera. Now I want to look at um, a shot I took here of this hedge and these palm trees so that you could see the distortion and the correct chromatic aberration. These are applied automatically um, in camera and then you can put them right away on in Lightroom. So I don't really notice these. They're not a big deal to me, but let's go ahead and look at it. You can see kind of the bowing here that happened on the sidewalk when I enabled that. Uh, the image flattens back out. Um, you can also see in here, let's zoom in, here's where you can see that chromatic aberration happening. Even when I hit and try to remove it by this way, it didn't remove that well. So for me, I had to do some extra corrections and now it looks like this. And it cleaned up pretty well as I went in myself and applied my uh, chromatic aberrations to it. This image shot at f5, however, did not have issues with chromatic aberrations. A positive about this lens is it uses the same 52mm filter size as the 35mm 1.8. A negative though is that it sits deep in the little threads there and I had a horrible time trying to get it back off. I don't know if it was the filter that I used, but no matter what I could not get a grip on that. I even tried um, turning the camera on so that the barrel would extend a little bit and going into manual focus and trying to get it, but it would continually move and drop back down. I finally had to resort to grabbing um, some of these channel locks, which I don't recommend because never do you want to bring a big piece of metal near your lens, but that was the last thing that I tried and that was the one thing that I was able to get a good enough grip to get the, the filter back off. Like a few other mid-level RF prime lenses from Canon, this 24mm lens features a 1 to 2 magnification ratio. For me, this is a big deal because it allows me not to have to add a dedicated macro lens to my kit when I'm out in the field doing engagement sessions. Often, when the couple is changing outfits, I borrow the engagement ring and get some detail shots of it. Combined with the cropping ability of the R5, you can get some excellent macro photos. With the image stabilization of this lens, I was able to take sharp macro photos at 1 60th of a second and a few sharp photos at 1 30th of a second. It should be noted that when you shoot a ring with this wide of a lens, you have to get pretty close to the ring, and thus your camera will show up in the reflection of the diamond and the gold. That said, I'm still very pleased with the results. In summary, I love this little lens. It's exactly what I was hoping it would be. A lightweight, sharp, inexpensive 24mm lens that gives me the option to shoot at 1.8 when I want to. It gives me a little wider perspective than my 35 does so that I can showcase more of the context. And yet, like the 35, it has the bonus of 1 to 2 macro ability. Now I don't have to bring my bigger, heavier, more expensive 15 to 35 on the beach where I would worry it could be ruined by the salt or sand, and that would be a much bigger cost to absorb. I love that Canon made this lens. It's a good reminder that when you're trying to run a profitable business, you don't need to run for the most expensive gear out there. Down in the description, I'll have links to all these lenses and the gear that I mentioned in this video. Using those links really helps support me to make these videos. If it was helpful for you and you hit that subscribe button and that like button, that's really helpful for me. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Shoot that at F4. Oh, the guy's gonna come in here and fish for the second shot, I guess. Yeah, we'll drop that one down to 1.8.